Good evening, members of the committee. My name is Rodrigo Pimento, and I am the Human Rights Coordinator for the Morale Progressive Democrats. Tonight, we are urging the committee to ensure that Morale officials are not forced to cooperate with federal immigration agents in regards to civil detainee requests. Passing House Bill 5515, the Trust Act, would protect residents in Morale from executive overreach to ensure that non priority immigrants are not deported. We believe that it is clear that municipalities and states may opt to not cooperate with federal immigration officials. Cooperation with immigration and customs enforcement is voluntary, meaning there is no legal obligation requiring agreements with federal immigration officials. While the federal government has again and again threatened to cancel all federal funding to states and cities that do not cooperate with ICE, we believe that this threat is not only unlawful, but unconstitutional. It is possible to envision a scenario where the federal government uses a spending clause to grant funds to states, adding a requirement that they must cooperate with ICE. However, changing existing agreements and grants would be unlawful. Chief Justice Roberts wrote in the Affordable Care Act ruling, at the same time, our states have recognized limits on Congress's power under the spending clause to secure state compliance with federal objectives. We have repeatedly characterized spending clause legislation as much in the nature of a contract. The legitimacy of Congress's exercise of the spending power rests on whether the state voluntarily and knowingly accepts the terms of the contract. Respecting this limitation is critical to ensuring the spending clause legislation does not undermine the status of the states as independent sovereigns in our federal system. We believe that the reality of legislation, such as House Bill 1593 and House Bill 5394, entails a diversion of resources from law enforcement and increased litigation to our cities and fear in immigrant communities. While ICE states that the program's purpose is to remove non-citizens who pose a threat to national security or the communities, over half of those caught by other agreements, such as 287G, had not been convicted in crimes of violence, drug offenses, or property crimes. For example, in Davidson County, Tennessee, the most common charge for those who were caught by the secure community by 287G was that of no driver's license. Considering that driving without a license cannot be determined until a stop is made, it is reasonably Fairly, it's fairly reasonable to infer that progress with ICE promotes racial profile. In Maricopa County, Arizona, home of Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who has targeted families, profiled individuals, and even supported the unconstitutional SB 1070, said to ICE that its raids on immigrant communities were justified by state law. However, over half of the arrests made in those raids were based on federal immigration charges alone. They were not arrested murderers or rapists. They were arresting families and children, letting them fester in ten cities in the sweltering Arizona summer while they awaited deportation. Sheriff Arpaio, Arpaio's reign of terror not only harmed immigrant communities, but increased response times to calls and increased rates of violent crime. Arpaio's raids diverted resources from actual police work to a politically motivated deportation force. We believe that Rhode Island should not waste our limited resources on voluntarily complying with flawed federal objectives. Instead, we should lead by example and enact the Trust Act as law, a bill that builds trust between immigrants and law enforcement and keeps our communities and families together. I thank you for your time.